Now, uh, let us take a look at some of the things of the nervous system that can uh, help us to know why uh, this thing of stress can have such a pervasive effect on the body. Let's just take a look at uh, some of the things that we have here. The first thing is the spinal nerves. We have all of these spinal nerves that come out from the spinal column and they have been traveling through the spinal cord, which is a cross section of which is shown here. Some of these nerves are coming out from, but some are going into the uh, spinal cord. You can see how many of these there are. They are throughout the body. In fact, what we're seeing here is just a, a mere fraction of how many there really are in the body. Then on this side, we see something else. Here is the spinal cord. This is the midbrain. And um, here we have the spinal cord. And then we have these ganglia that you can see here on both sides. These have to do with the running of things. The first ones that I showed you had to do with motor activity or the working of our muscles and the receiving of sensory impulses from the outside. But these have to do with the running of the various organs of the body. The pancreas, the liver, the stomach, the colon, the small bowel, um, even such things as the heartbeat and respiration. All of these are under the influence of this part of the nervous system. So you can see why it is that so much of the body, the skeletal system, the muscles, as well as all of the internal organs, these are all involved in the nervous system. But the part that is the capital of all is the brain. And here we have a most marvelous mechanism. In fact, some who have uh, spent a lifetime studying this uh, organ say that it is more complex than the entire universe. If it is, then we can expect that we could, that one person would never really learn it all in one lifetime. So let's just take a look at some of the anatomy, the function of it, and even the microscopic anatomy, or even the gross description of, the, of this uh, organ is uh, more, we, we just don't know what so much of it means. But here is one hemisphere and here is the other with a portion cut off from uh, the, the front part. Here is what is called the hind brain or the cerebellum. And the cerebellum has to do only with, well, maybe only, uh, with the coordination of movements. And the way that we can do a smooth movement is under the control of the cerebellum. Now you can see a faint shadow right here. This is what we call the hippocampus and it has to do with, and uh, uh, the um, uh, thalamus, and this has to do with uh, various parts of the control of many of our functions like blood pressure, thoughts, and anything that comes into the thalamus can make quite a, uh, an important change in the way that we think. Notice how complex the blood vessel system is. Here we have the vertebral arteries that come up to make the basilar artery. And then we have three major branches of this, um, this basilar artery as it makes what is called the circle of Willis. Not only the vertebral arteries are involved here, but also the internal carotid arteries. So there are four places where the circle of Willis can get its blood supply. Why did the Lord give us such an elaborate way to just see the blood supply of the brain? Well, it is because without this elaborate blood supply, we could get a, a serious problem by blockage of just one of these. Let's say we got one of the vertebral arteries cut. Then we still have three other ways that we can supply blood to the circle of Willis. Now, we have also several coverings. This, the meninges are here, the dura is here. It's absolutely marvelous. But let's take a look at what is done in various areas. Broca's area, that's this area right here, is where 
speech is interpreted. But where we do speech is with the tongue, the larynx, the lips, in this area. So we do, do speech here. We understand what speech is about here. Then we have the nose, the eyelid, the brow, the fingers, and the index finger is a large part of the brain and all these other parts and have to do with the movement of the brain, then the sensory portion of the brain, which senses uh, the various um, sensations that we can sense from the outside world. Many different places where we do specific things in the brain. And uh, the, uh, the little brain cells themselves are complex enough that we could spend probably two days just studying the complexity of the brain cells themselves to say nothing of the total uh, gross anatomy of the brain. What a wonderful thing it is that God made mind. So with, with this background of anatomy and physiology, let me just tell you what uh, Dr. Hans Selye, who was a Canadian physician back in the 1940s, did a lot of study on stress and he found a number of disorders and conditions that were related to stress. Angina, asthma, the, uh, various uh, cancers, cardiovascular disease, autoimmune diseases, colds, depression, diabetes, headaches, hypertension, reduced immune system functioning, irritable bowel syndrome, menstrual irregularities, premenstrual syndrome, rheumatoid arthritis, ulcerative colitis, ulcers, and on and on. There is hardly an end to the uh, things that can be caused by stresses. Therefore, if you have some kind of strange disorder in your body, you wonder why you're having it, look at this matter of stresses in your body. See if there are those things that you need to change your attitude about. As uh, Dr. Miller was saying that just a change in attitude can sometimes make quite a difference in the way that you uh, are stressed by a certain stressor.